Hi guys, I'm Jesse at StroPro.com and today I'm going to be showing you the Godox AD100 Pro. As you can see, this is a tiny light. In fact, it's the smallest strobe that Godox has ever made. It's 100 watt seconds of power, which is more than twice as much as a regular speed light. Plus, it's more compact than a speed light too. So let's take a look at all the cool features that this AD100 has to offer. Let's get right into it. So let's take a look at how the Godox 8100 Pro compares in size to some other popular Godox products. Over here I have the TT685 which is actually the same size as the Godox V860 and you can see right here the height it's quite a bit shorter it's still shorter even with the lens turned down there and the diameter you can see it's about the same. But the benefit of the 8100 Pro here is that if you're using it off camera, you've got uh, 1.5 times the power in the 8100 Pro. So if I take a look at the V1 here, it's the same power basically as the other speed lights. Now the big benefit that you're gonna get off this is it uses the same head. And we'll get into that a little bit later. It has the round head, which takes the AKR1 accessories. But still, the AD100 Pro has it beat in size on both the um, height and the width here. Um, so you can kind of get a better look at that. Now let's say you're going into a strobe. Over here I have the AD300 Pro and the AD400 Pro. So you might have one of these already in your kit. So say you've got an 8400 Pro and you're finding that you're using that at, you know, quarter power or something. Well, you can actually save yourself a lot of size here by going to an 8100 Pro because it's a quarter power essentially, 100 versus 400 watts there, but it's a lot more compact as you can see. So not only in height, obviously it's almost about twice the height there. Um, the diameter is quite a bit narrower as well. So there's just no beating the 8100 Pro for compactness. Even on the 300 Pro, um, this is the previous smallest strobe that we've ever had and it is quite a bit smaller there as well. So both height and width again, and again at one third the power, you're gonna save yourself a little bit of money going to the 8100 Pro if you're not gonna need that extra power that these bigger strobes offer. So that's just a little bit of a size comparison to some popular products. Let's take a look what's inside the box. Actually, before we get into that, let's just take a look how it compares to Kevin's lunch here. So over here we have a can of chunky soup, which you can see is a little bit taller, but the diameter is the exact same. And a healthy beverage over on the other side, height is about the same, but it's a little bit wider. So there you have it. Compared to the strobes into Kevin's lunch, we're ready to go and check out what's inside the box. So every Godox 8100 Pro comes with this handy little carrying case. Um, it's kind of a hard and soft case, so it is gonna protect it from any damage if you're throwing it into another larger case. So it's zippered and then inside it's all form fitted to fit everything. So we have our light here, you can see, and then the accessories. We have a zippered pocket up on the top. So we'll pop the light out. And on the top here, we have our umbrella bracket, and this is what you're gonna to use to mount this to a stand. We have some other options that I'll show you as well. Um, then we have our battery, and this is a great compact battery. This is going to offer 360 full power flashes, and it only takes about three and a half hours to recharge that. So amazing performance out of a tiny little battery here. Now we have two options to charge this. So the first is going to be the USB or computer charger, I like to call it. And I'm just gonna go into the top pocket here and grab the included cable. So to use this, you're just going to plug into the end here and you can use the other USB end right into a laptop or any adapter that you might have for your phone or something that supports a USB connection. And then you've got your little uh, LED indicator, which will show you when the battery is charged or is in the process of being charged. So that's the USB. And if you don't want to deal with that, you just want to plug it right into the wall. We would just plug the USB end into that adapter and then plug right into the strobe over here under this flap, which I'll show you everything under there a little bit later, but the connection would just go right in there plug into the wall, and then you're charging. 
Now that you've seen everything that comes in the box, let's take a look at some of the features. One of the really cool things about the 8100 Pro is its ability to integrate into the AKR1 accessory kit. Now you might already own this. It works on the V1. It works on some of our R1, like our little LED lights. So if it's in your kit, this will work directly with that. If not, I think it's a great investment. It's a group of some magnetic modifiers that fit directly to the round head of the 8100. So just to show you a couple of them, what you can do with that, um, the easiest thing would be to gel this. So you can throw on a magnetic gel and we sell a separate pack of gels, either a color correction or a color effect. I just happen to have put a red one in here, but you can put whatever color you want and they are just going to stack right on there. If you wanted to grid that down, it comes with a grid in the set. You can stack a grid on there. If I wanted to diffuse that even more, I could even stack a diffuser on there. Or if you don't want any of those, just put the diffuser right on there. You don't have to stack them, it's just an option. You get some other really cool things like a wide angle diffuser here if you want to control the zoom a little bit more. This does zoom up and down, which I'll show you, but this will spread it out and diffuse that light even a little bit more. Um, this is a really cool one here, the snoot. This one is not magnetic, but it's just as easy to put on. The diameter is the same, slide it on. Now you have an awesome hair light. You can really dial in that light, put it right on a spot that you want um, just with that rubber snoot. And that actually folds down. So that guy will go flat when you collapse it down. I won't do the whole thing right there, but it just goes in like that and then you can extend it out as needed. Um, this is another popular option here. We have our bounce. So I can use a white bounce on there or I can flip that around and use the black if I want to. And these are often used with gels, like I said, or a grid. And you can, actually I didn't tighten that one down, but you can stack them as well and just put that on like that. So I can either use a diffuser or a grid, whatever I want in that kit. And then our last piece here, is the barn door so I can really control spill if I'm using this on a background or I want to hit a specific part of a model, you know, shine some light on her face or under light it a little bit more. You can open and control those barn doors really easily. So I just think that's an awesome way to use the AKR1 kit. Again, if you already have it, that's great. And if not, I think it's a worthwhile investment to pick up with your AD100 Pro. So let's mount this to a stand. Because the 8100 Pro is designed as an off-camera flash, it doesn't have a hot shoe, so you're not gonna be able to camera mount it. You will be putting it on a stand or maybe putting it on the ground if you don't have a stand. So Godox does include one option to do that, and it's a new and improved mount over some other previous versions that we've had before. Um, the nice thing is that we have a slotted um, mount here, which just means that this lines up to the slotted mount on the bottom. So previously in old versions of lights and stuff, these weren't the greatest and they could twist. This eliminates that problem so it locks really secure. Plus they also give you two options to mount this. So I always like to have the mounting or the tightening lock on the right hand side just because I'm right handed. So all you're going to do is go find the screw here. We have the bottom one and the top one. So if you want to mount it on the back, you would just go over here and there's a little thumb wheel. I'm just dialing in there. So a lot of people like this one if it's going to be handheld. So you could actually tighten this down now it's kind of like a flashlight you can move around. Just gives you a little bit of room in the front there if you wanted to handhold that. I wouldn't recommend that for putting it on the stand like that. It's just a little back uh, heavy, I would say. So, you know, things are gonna wanna tip if you put a modifier on the front there. I would use the middle mounting point and you can just screw that in. And again, you're just trying to make sure that those two little notches line up to the two notches in there. And that's gonna be nice and tight and secure, have no way of twisting out of there. Um, you've also got a umbrella mount hole right here. So you can feed an umbrella right through there. The shaft just slides right in and it's tension mounted. So there's no screw or set screw, anything you need to tighten in there. And then all we're gonna do, back off this screw, drop it on, your favorite strobe pro stand, tighten it down and we're ready to go. So that's the included option. Let me show you a better option if you want to use your existing strobe pro modifiers that you might have for other strobes already. 
So our second way to mount this is with the optional S2 bracket. Now this is a very popular bracket and again, you might already have one of these if you were using it for speed lights or something. The great thing about the S2 is that it has the round slot here. It's got an adapter that slides out. So it has to be the S2. This will not fit with the previous version, the S1, which was just designed for speed lights. So with that pulled out, what we're able to do is slide the 8100 Pro into the back of the S2. Now you might be wondering how far to slide that in. Well, it's really personal preference, but one recommendation is that you have a fan actually down here. It's about the size of a quarter, really small, and you don't want to block that. So if you were to happen to line that up right on the kind of flange here, you would be blocking that port. It doesn't really come on that often unless you're using the modeling lamp a lot, but just to be safe, I would slide that forward just a little bit more. So let's just mount this onto the stand and it's really easy to do that. Just back off the screw, tighten that down, and this will fit on any Strobe Pro stand. And we're just going to straighten that with the handle over here. And I'm going to slide that in just so I can see that the fan is past there and then just tighten it down and you're not tightening this down until you hear a crunch or anything just so it's secure there's rubber so it's not going to slide out at all and you can see how small and compact that is so we showed you the akr1 accessory kit which is a bunch of small little modifiers that go directly on to the 8100 pro but what if you want to use existing modifiers or you want to buy a new softbox something that gives you a bigger light source well, that's where the S2 comes into play and it's really easy to do that. So right here, I've got a 12 by 55 Stro Pro strip box, which is a very popular option. And I can just go, anything that has a Bowens mount will mount directly to this. So I just line up the different slots there. Once it's in there flush, quarter turn, lock it in. Now I have an awesome kind of fill light if I want to use it in studio or if I'm outside, I could put a different softbox on or whatever you want. Really the options are limitless when you've got the S2 bracket. So I think it's really worthwhile picking one up. It is optional, but you can buy it separately or you can buy it in one of our kits. So check that out on the website. So just before we get into the menu functions, let me just show you how to insert that battery. Right now it's in. Um, so if you have your battery, you're just going to take it, line it up there. And it's actually, it seems like it's upside down. The pins will be on the top of the battery here and just insert it that way. It will go in there it's going to click in. And again, to remove that, the switch is over kind of midway across here. Just slide that up with your thumb. It's a good idea to put your finger behind because it is spring mounted. So you can end up shooting the battery out if you're not paying attention. So that's how to do the battery. Um, again, we have some fan ports um, or cooling ports on the side and our fan is on the bottom. So just pay attention not to block those. Um, the only other thing underneath this cover right here, um, we have our USB charging port and then we have a 3.5 millimeter PC sink. So you could technically pair this up with a sink cable and fire it that way from your camera. I would highly recommend just going with the trigger, which I'm about to show you, but that is there for a backup if you need it. So let's take a closer look at all the menu functions. Okay guys, so we have the 8100 Pro mounted to a stand and I'm going to go through all the menu functions for you. And the first thing we need to do is turn it on and you're going to see the power button right over here by the battery on the right hand side. So push that and you're gonna see a symbol pop up and that's telling you to scroll the wheel to unlock it. So when I rotate it down, it's going to uh, turn on. And again, to turn off, we would just push the button. But when you turn it on, we gotta rotate that down and it's going to come alive. So right away you see a bunch of things on here and this is a light that you really need to use a trigger with. So I'm going to show you in its most basic function um, how you can use it if you don't have a trigger first. And to do that, I'm just going to turn off all the wireless function, which is kind of, in my opinion, really the most important feature of this light. So we'll turn that off and just back up. So if you don't have a trigger, you've just opened the box and you want to use this at home, this is what you're going to see 
um, to use it in that mode. So the M right here is manual mode. In this function here, we have two different modes, so we can go manual. If I push the mode in the top left, we have multi. So I'll show you both of those in a second. But in its most basic function, all you're going to do is go to the scroll wheel here, and this adjusts the power in one-tenth increments. So you saw we were on 1256 at its minimum, and full power is going to be all the way up to one over one. So when you hit one over one, that means full power and all the current Godox lights use that same scale system. So I can dial it down and then we would just fire it. But how do we fire this unless we have a cable plugged into it? That's one option. Or we also have optical slave. So if I go back into menu here, and I'm just going to rotate through the menu functions here. Um, we'll go beep and then photo cell. So you'll see photo C there. We can turn that to S1 or we can turn it to S2. S1 is the optical sensor. So up on the top here, there's a red little strip you'll see. That is looking for another flash when we have S1 enabled. And then this will fire in sync with it. You see S1 pop up. S2, you're really not going to use. It's only used, it ignores a preflash delay, like on uh, a TTL preflash or red eye reduction. So you could fire it in sync with that. But with S1 enabled, this light is now going to fire when you fire another flash and it sees that. So your pop up flash, this one's going to go with it. The only problem is that's a little bit unreliable because you have to have line of sight to the sensor up here. Um, so we can do manual, like I said, or I can go into the mode here, push it again, and we'll do multi, and I'll get a little bit more in depth with this, but this just controls, um, the dial is going to control your power still, but if we push that dial in, it's actually a button, so we can control the hertz there, so let's set it at five, and this is the number of shots, let's say we're going to go to five hertz as well, and this is really a, a function of your power setting. So I can't just decide, oh, I wanna fire 100 shots at full power at five hertz, it's not going to work. There's a scale and you can find that in the manual um, that shows you what shutter speed you should be doing. There's actually a formula for that. Um, but this is going to multi-burst like that. And this is not a function where you're going to go in and set your camera to continuous high and then set this to multi. That is not the function that this is used for. This is used to catch like a dancer uh, on a stage moving in motion all in one frame. So she would be doing, I don't know, a ballet move across the stage, captures it in one frame, like a sequence or like a skier, for example, uh, going off a jump, but you would need more power than the 8100 has to offer for that. So you can look up some examples of multi-burst mode. Um, just Google those, you'll see exactly how that is used or we'll have another video that we do on that in the future for you. So let's get out of there and I'm just gonna go back into manual. There's a couple other things that are universal across the board here. Um, one is going to be the modeling lamp. So this little strobe is nice. It has an LED modeling lamp and that is controlled over here on the bottom left by pushing this. So that just turned it on and you can probably see it a little bit behind my hand there. But how do we control the power of that? There's actually 10 power levels, and if we hold that light for two seconds, that little um, modeling lamp, we can now go to the dial. 10 is going to be full all the way down to one, or we can just click that scroll wheel. That would turn it off from there. So what I want to do, I'm going to bring that up to 10. I'm going to then push my button again. So now it's locked at 10. So every time you turn that on, it's going to be at level 10. So a quick push of the button turns it on or off. And we can actually control this off the controller as well, which we'll show you in a minute. So the modeling lamp, it is not going to give you like enough light to do video or anything. This is just to help you try to find focus uh, in a dark room, give you a little bit of an indication where some of that light might be pointed. Um, but again, it's not a video light. We get that asked all the time. 
a much better light for you would be like the ML60 or go to a VL or FV series, which is going to be a perfect video light for you. The next universal function is going to be the zoom. And when I say universal, I just mean that works in its basic um, optical settings or with the trigger. So when I push zoom, you'll see actually before that down at the bottom left there, we're at 28 millimeters. If I push zoom, it's going to jump and this is going to be automatic and I can just flip through 50, 70, and then 85. And that's going to be the max. And you might be able to hear that on my mic, I'm not sure. As I flip through, that diaphragm is actually opening and closing. So as I go wider at 28, that's going to be at its most open position. And then as I zoom in, you'll hear that thing closing down. And what it's trying to do is close that to try to project the light even further. Down here we have the test button that's going to be indicated with the uh, white button there with the little lightning bolt. So if I push that, it's going to fire it. And you can hear that beep going on and off. So that beep is just a recycling beep. It's telling you that the light is ready to fire again. But because this light is so fast, it really recycles almost instantly. Even at full power, it's only a second and a half. I'll just turn it up so you can see that. One over one full power, second and a half, and at its minimum power, this really blasts through. And you can see down at 1256, it's really instant. So that's where that beep can get annoying. So you can actually go into the menu and then rotate up to beep here. That's on right now. We're just going to turn it off get out of the menu by pushing the menu button. Now you don't have that beep. So just be aware if we're working with a professional model, a lot of times they'll key their poses off that beep. Um, but if you're not doing that, you can turn it off so it doesn't annoy you. Okay, so we're going to go back into the menu and we're going to turn wireless on. So push menu and I'm going to go back into WL, which is wireless, turn it on, get out of the menu. Now we have a bunch of things kind of turned on here, which I'm going to explain. Uh, one thing I should actually mention, if you get into the menu system or you've screwed something up, you forget what to do, you'll see this RST, which is linking these two buttons together, push them both at the same time and hold them and now it's reset. So actually when you turn your light on from the beginning right out of the box, this is what it's gonna look like. We don't have S1 on anymore. Um, the beep is turned back on, but that's okay. So we have a couple of other things that showed up on the screen now. Um, we have this A and then we have a channel. So the great thing about the Godox system, it's super easy to connect to a controller so we can use this light, we could use a speed light, other strobes, whatever, it doesn't matter. They all work off of one controller. All we need to do is set the channel in the group. So to set the channel, we have a group channel button and I'm actually going to hold that button in and that's going to set the channel. So it's gonna start blinking. I can rotate that. I have 32 different channels I can go to and lock that in. One thing to keep in mind, we'll just set that back to 21 here. I can push the set button or if I leave it, it'll stop blinking and it's locked in there. One thing to keep in mind, this light does have the ID function. So I just hit menu, go down to ID. I'm gonna click the scroll wheel and turn that and you're gonna see all these IDs. So if you're ever in a situation where one of these 32 channels is not working or you just wanna make sure you're Definitely unique, you're not gonna run into anyone else running a controller at the same time. You can turn the ID on. But don't forget, if you're not going to do that, keep ID off because otherwise your controller will not connect unless you set an ID. Most of the time it's really not necessary, but we see a lot of people get kind of hung up on there. So pick any one of the channels. Um, I've got it on 21 there. And now we have our group and we can set our group by just pushing the button. So if I want this light to be B and say I have another 8100 as C and we've got some background lights as D, set them all wherever you want. We can go all the way to E. 
So we'll just leave that on A, and then really all we are gonna need to do is connect our controller the exact same way, which I'll show you in a second, channel 21, and then we're just going to control the individual groups. Um, one thing I should mention, you'll see this little H over here. I didn't show you this before. That's high speed sync, which is what this light has as well, because it is a pro series. You can fire this all the way up to one eight thousandth of a second. So if you want to control your ambient or freeze motion, high speed sync is a great way to do that. Um, normally if you're working with a controller, that camera is going to automatically enable it when you bring your shutter speed above the native uh, sync speed of that camera. So Nikon 1 250th of a second, Canon 1 200th usually. But if your camera doesn't automatically do it, we can go and turn that on. We're going to hold the zoom button in for two seconds. And now you'll see that little H at the top. That means high speed sync is enabled. One thing I should mention about high speed sync though, I'm just going to change the mode here to manual to show you. You'll see what we're down to 1 1 28th as the minimum power. I can't go any lower. That's just a function of high speed sync going any lower than that. And the strobe essentially wouldn't even be showing up. So that's why um, high speed sync is enabled at a minimum of a minimum of 1 1 28th if you're wondering. Okay guys, let's just uh, circle back to the menu again real quick before we get into the controller and I'm going to push menu and just go through a couple things here. So on the top right, you're gonna see version 1.0. That's the current firmware of this light. That can change as firmware, new firmwares are released from Godox. You can find them all on our Strobe Pro website under the help section. Um, but you, if it's working fine, usually you don't even need to worry about that. So these are all our custom functions. So let's just go through them. We talked about the wireless already. And again, I'm just using the wheel here and I push the button in as an enter button and then go through there, rotate it to switch between and then push it again to back out. And then if I want, it'll either default out of there or I can just hit the menu to back fully out. So our wireless, we've got on our ID, I just explained to you, um, not much to explain more about that. There's our beep, which we can turn on and off. This is our photo cell where I was showing you S1 and S2. So if you want to trigger that optically, if you're not doing that, make sure you turn that off. Otherwise, anyone's flash is going to trigger your light when it sees it. Um, standby is just this will go to sleep after 60 minutes, after 30 minutes, or we can turn standby off. Um, you can wake it up from the controller if you'd like to do that. So if you're shooting a wedding or something, you're in the ceremony um, or the reception, I would recommend just keeping that off. Otherwise, you can turn it on to save battery. Um, delay here, this is going to allow you to set a firing delay. So you can set that wherever you want. Um, a lot of people might use this in rear curtain sync if they want the flash to fire a little bit after um, the shutter even more, you can control it that way. Um, and again, just back around to wireless and we've covered all those functions. And again, just keep in mind, if you're watching this video at a later date, those might have changed. Sometimes we add some um, or some could even be taken away or just renamed there. So keep that in mind as you're going through there. Pretty straightforward stuff. Let's get into using the controller. Okay guys, I have grabbed an X-Pro controller here and it's really easy to connect. So whether you have a Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, whatever camera you have, you've selected the proper uh, controller here and they're all gonna connect the same. So first thing I need to do is change this channel five up here to our channel 21 that we set on the 8100 Pro and I'll try to hold this as still as possible. Um, on the X-Pro we have a dedicated button for this over by the zoom channel button. I'm going to hold that down. It's going to highlight up top there and I can rotate that up to 21. If you go past it, just scroll back, hit the set button and now we're set. To make sure that I'm controlling the A group, I just hit A. That's going to highlight. I can use the wheel now to control the power and I can make sure it's connected. Well, I know it's connected because I just saw the power change, but I could hit the test button 
as well and we have the beep on there. To back out I can just hit the set button again and we can have a lot of different features here like we can turn our modeling lamp on there's all kinds of stuff high speed sync everything so check out the description below for the full video walkthrough on the x pro or the x2t um, but just keep in mind whatever um, group that you set your light to just push the button and then you can control that so really easy i can change the mode by pushing mode that's going to turn it to off the dotted line there um, and I have TTL. One thing that you won't see on the menu here in TTL is if I have that highlighted, I can dial in exposure compensation. So I can go plus three or minus three. If you dial that in, make sure you take it back to zero for the next time that you're using the controller. Otherwise you're going to be overexposed. So again, if you don't know, TTL is basically just automatic mode. Um, the light and the camera are going to basically be talking to each other to try to set the most accurate uh, lighting scenario for you. It's going to be kind of a median light. It's going to take its best guess. So a lot of the times it might be underexposed or overexposed. So you can just use this exposure compensation here to do that. Or if you're in the studio, a much better way to do that would just be to set it into manual mode and then just dial in whatever power you need right there. One thing I should mention on the controller, anything you set on the controller is going to override anything that you've set on the light. So if I adjust this power here and I think, okay, the next time I fire my light, that's going to happen. No, it's whatever is on the controller is going to happen. So if I hit test, that's going to bring it back right away. It pushes all the settings from the controller over. So that's how to connect the X Pro controller. Um, again, check out that video for a full uh, walkthrough on how to look at all the different menu functions and everything that you need to know about that. Okay guys, I've grabbed another popular controller here, the Godox X2T, and it's very simple to connect as well. So again, we're on channel 21 and we are on channel three. Now there is no dedicated button to control the channels on the front here. So I need to go into the menu. I click menu over here and I'm going to use the scroll dial. You can scroll down here until you see CH, which is our channel. And then I'm just going to hit set, which moves us over and use the dial again to bring us back up to 21. And once we're in 21, I can hit set again. And now I can back out. Remember, don't touch that ID unless you really need to, because a lot of times people forget. I'll just hit menu and back out there. So I can, again, use the test button, which is on the top of this controller. It's a little lightning bolt, which the test button always is. Hit that and it's firing. I can see, okay, I pushed my 1 8 power setting over there. To adjust that, I have the buttons on the top of the X2T. So I'm just hitting the a and you can kind of see that right here hit a it's going to be highlighted and then use my scroll wheel to dial as necessary so i can dial it up down wherever i want change the modes again so hit mode that's going to turn it off that dotted line so the light will actually still be on it's just not going to fire so if you have multiple lights you want to turn off a fill light you've got like three of these set up in a scene that's really handy to be able to do then I can go into TTL, use the wheel to add my exposure compensation, plus three or minus three again. And that's really all there is to it for the X2T. So again, check out the video on this controller below. So there you have it guys. That is absolutely everything you need to know about the Godox AD100 Pro. You've seen how small it is. It fits in the palm of your hand. It has amazing battery life, lasting 360 full power flashes. It goes down to 1 of its power, giving you nine full stops of range. Plus it fits into the Godox system, which is awesome. Just like the other pro level lights, it has TTL, high speed sync, works with uh, any controller, so you can easily add it into your existing lineup. So I think this is an awesome accent light. If you're a big strobe shooter, you have other strobes that give you lots of power. Or if you're doing real estate or something like just headshots or that, that you don't need a ton of power, the AD100 Pro comes in at an affordable price and gives you a lot of bang for your buck. 
So check out the different kits that we have. I've shown you the AKR1 accessory kit. The S2 bracket is a great option to add to this as well. Plus we have multiple light kits that we sell with our Stro Pro Traveler bag that really make a compact, easy to travel with kit. I think you're really gonna like it. Check it out at stroprocom And until next time, I'm Jesse.